I'm on the phone with Eric Meyer, author, recognized expert on the subjects of HTML, CSS, and web standards. And he's the founder of a complex spiral consulting and an event apart, a very popular web conference series. Good afternoon. Your time, Eric, and thanks for agreeing to the call. Hey, thanks for having me join you. You bet. You. Yeah, you bet. Eric, you're a seasoned web professional going way back uh, to the early 90s, and I'd like to ask you to look into the crystal ball for web professionals in the year to come, 2014. What, what are you seeing or hearing as trends? Um, I think it, it's interesting. There's so much happening that it's almost – it's 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 really hard to to look into the crystal ball and and know anything because browsers are sure. changing so fast and I know. adding so it's much stuff keep... so quickly. Um, in my little corner of the world, I guess, um, I would say, in my corner of the, by my corner of the world, I mean you know CSS and that sort of thing. Um, I would say that Flexbox is going to be big. And with it, um, layout systems. So, uh, some real, some real changes in how people do layout. Not necessarily what the layouts look like, um, although there's that possibility as well. And flexible box or, or flex box is um, really quite powerful. It's it's interesting that it's so powerful for layouts, given that it's not actually exactly supposed to be. A layout system, but um, it, it makes possible a lot of things that, uh, that that we haven't been able to do in CSS for a long time, like you know, fun stretchy stuff and equal heights elements, and and uh, making things like photo galleries that 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 distribute their space really easy. Um, sorry, there there's been a little bit of implementation of that over the last year. Um, and it's, uh, it's, get, it's getting better and better. In fact, just uh, as, as we're doing this, I think just within the last day or two, um, Mo Mozilla just added a property, uh, flex wrap, which they had been lacking and the, uh, their competitors had not. So as that makes its way out through the, the alpha beta channels into the public eye, that will, that will make things like photo galleries, just, I mean, so simple you can't even believe it. it and I've messed, with, I've messed around with Fluxbox. I've, I've done some research, and uh, um, at a certain point, you start to think, wait, it can't be this easy. I have to do something else in order to make this happen, and, and it, that's yeah. never the case, <laughs> interestingly enough. So, um, so there's that. Um, the other thing I think that that's going to occupy a lot of attention and time is going to be responsive images, not responsive design. I mean, yes, responsive design will will still continue to be really big as as we figure out what the best practices are, but um, responsive images need a lot of work. You know, the 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 idea with responsive images being that um, if you if you want to serve an image, there are lots of different contexts in which a person can view those images. You know, there's someone sitting at their desk with a 27-inch monitor and a maximized browser window, and there's somebody walking down the street on their iPhone, and there's, you know, somebody way out in the in the rural area, uh, you know, where they have maybe um, they don't even maybe they might not even have 3G bandwidth um, or you know, even it, maybe they have 3G bandwidth, but it's not very strong signal. Who is you know using a, a, an Android phone? And you don't want to serve the same image in all those contexts, right? Like the the smaller, more bandwidth optimized image that you want to send to a phone is not necessarily the same image you want to send to a desktop. But HTML's never really had a well, it hasn't had a way of saying here are all of the different images that I want used in this place and you, the browser, should pick the best one depending on your situation, right? Are you a mobile browser on low bandwidth? Are you a mobile browser on high bandwidth? Like, that might be two different images. Now, you know, way back in the day, HTML had a low source attribute for the image element where you could say, here's an image, and then here's the low resolution image that you could, you know, load this quickly and display it, and then as the more high resolution image comes in, you know, you then once it's all the way in, you can replace it with low source. Well, Nobody ever really implemented that, and now that we need it, it's kind of ironic that that it's gone. That that basically nothing supports it. Um, 
So there's all this work about trying to figure out how the hacker, you know, how do how do how should we even express in markup the various picture, you know, the various image alternatives. There's the picture element proposal. There's the there's a source set uh, proposal, you know, and a lot of back and forth, and unfortunately some ill will, I think, in the community. Um, people feeling like they put in a lot of effort that wasn't appreciated and stuff like that. I, that seems like the other thing that's gonna that's gonna really need to get work done over the next year because you know we're running into these problems where I uh, I load up pages on my you know I load up sites on my iPhone even just you know being around a city sometimes you don't get the best signal strength depending on where you are and I'm sitting there and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting yeah. and waiting and waiting right. and waiting for this thing to load and when it finally loads it's like oh look you have this humongous image at the top that had <laughs> I didn't need at all because I just wanted to right. read the the, the content um, and web fonts are, have the same problem, right? You have these pages that are literally all of the text on the entire page or the entire site is, is done with downloadable fonts. And again, I'm waiting and waiting and waiting on my iPhone with Safari. I just have this big blank page that might have these images scattered through it, these little borders and decorative elements and stuff like that. And there's no text. And I wait for, you know, half a minute or a minute for this web font to download when I wish there were a way for either an HTML or some other mechanism that author that people who create these pages would would say, okay, well, I'm not going to shove this whole font at you because that's going to take forever, right? There, if, there should be a really easy way to do that, and, and maybe there is, and I've missed it. <laughs> um, usually, these things require JavaScript, but it would be nice if we had a, sort of a built-in, standardized way of saying that 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 was, you know, like like responsive images, responsive fonts, responsive type would be really good as well. Um, and that's Yeah, that's a that's a really good point. In fact, these issues are real because uh, yeah. we experience them every day, right? Um, in fact, you know, you mentioned you'd be waiting for, you know, 30 seconds. I, I'd probably be gone already. So, right, which therein lies the rub, right? Right. Yeah, exactly. There's, there have been times that I've just gotten tired of waiting for a page to load and I've just, you know, gone away basically, and not ever seen it, not ever, not ever seen whatever it had to say. Um, in a way, it's sort of like the old, uh, well, I still run into this problem, but, but it's less of a problem these days. The um, restaurant websites that are all flash, right? And I'm out, I'm thinking, right. ah, I'd like to go somewhere to eat. Let me pull up the, you know, let me do my location-based thing to find out restaurants near me. Oh, here's a restaurant near me. Let me pull up the website and see what's on the menu. Oh, I can't see anything on the menu. I guess I'm not going there. Right. <laughs> exactly. Answers the kick question about Flash, which I'm um, asked often, uh, almost every day, mm. by those that teach too, right? Right. I, you know, Flash is a component. It's a piece of the web, um, but there, it's it's obviously fallen out of favor a lot, and I would attribute that mostly to mobile devices that don't support it, and even mobile devices that do support it usually are very slow to render and to do stuff. And so it's not as good of an experience mobile wise. I mean, in my experience. So, you know, I've, I've had this, you know, I've, I've, I still see this today. You know, it's not always restaurants. Sometimes it can be other kinds of stores or other, other, you know, information sources where I'm, I'm trying to pull something up and I can't, there's nothing, right. They don't even say, Hey, would you like to see our full website with the, the HTML, right? It's just, yeah, right. Pfft, nothing. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I guess I'll go somewhere else. Sadly. So, um, you know, it's not that Flash is bad. It's just it, it got overused, right? It got massively overused. There was there was a time when a lot of people thought that basically a website was an HTML element, a body element, and a and a, you know calling in Flash, and that was it, right? The HTML was only useful as a vehicle for the Flash. Um, I think we've I think we've learned better for the most part by now, but you now it, it takes time to migrate away from that stuff. Yeah. I, I would say another thing um, that that I think will be interesting in the next year is um, animations and transitions and that sort of stuff using CSS. Um, it, the support's pretty widespread, but I think what we're still lacking is best practices and some of the really really interesting techniques and tricks that, that only come from sort of repeated use and long exposure. So, you know, we were, uh, people who use CSS have been using it for years before we started to develop some of the interesting 
you know, sort of workarounds and hacks and, and techniques. Um, Alex Robinson coming up with his one true layout um, approach, which was kind of a hack, but it, it wasn't that he was breaking anything. He was just using CSS in a really creative way. And animations, I think, are are transitioning into that phase where people have started, people have used them in sort of a basic way. And, you know, I was, oh, I made a thing slide over. And when you mouse over the link, it gets a little, you know, in the sidebar, it gets a little wider or, um, you know, something, the color fades in the background or whatever, um, which are all useful, but they're very basic. And so figuring out ways of sort of combining these things and using, you know, subtle animations um, to, to really help the user without being in their face about it. Um, I think that's coming in the next year or so as, as people start towards this out and, and combining animations with things like SVG images, which I, I was just seeing, um, I think it was an article on CSS tricks about that, um, which, you know, you can do some very interesting things with CSS animations where you can just animate pieces of SVG images. So you define an image and you say, okay, this piece right here, I want it to rotate. Right, just doing that with CSS, and so the ability to do those kinds of things, I think, is going to there's going to be a lot of of work that happens there, and people coming out, you know, it's like check this out, and then you know it immediately gets retweeted a billion times because everyone's like, I can't even believe that's yeah. possible. Right. And along with that, browsers getting more efficient with their animations, they're optim optimizing their code this, the way they have their JavaScript engines over the last several years. Um, it's amazing to think how slow JavaScript used to be and how yeah. incredibly fast it is now. And um, Yeah, and all these uh, improvements, mobile is driving a lot of this innovation, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah, as it should, right? Well, you know, it's, it's what the kids are using. Yeah, and me too, guys with silver hair. <laughs> well, listen, uh, Eric, we appreciate all that you do and have done for web professionals, uh, your perspectives on all these very um, uh, important topics, and most definitely for your time today. Well, thanks. It was a pleasure to be here.